Scottish PKU Support Group is run by families and friends to provide advice and support for all people whose lives are affected by PKU. For more information, telephone 0698 740 697 now or write to PKU Action 2000, Box 2000, Glasgow. Rose is about to discover that blood is thicker than water. I see you're saying that my son has corrupted your daughter, is that it? Firm Friends, tonight at 9 on Scottish. Now, TV Weekly focuses on Australian soaps with a location report on a country practice and a chat with Home and Away's Tug. Once again, and welcome to TV Weekly. Now, get your TV brains in gear. I'm going to test it. Now, I'm going to show you a famous TV personality for two points. Who is this famous TV face from the past? Have you got it yet? Look at that. Lamb Chop. Absolutely. Hope you got that one. Lamb Chop. <laughs> Big star in the 60s and the 70s and more from, from her. Is Lamb Chop a he or a she? We'll be finding that out. Also coming up on the program today. Listen, pretty boy, I don't know what your problem is, but if I were you, I'd go and see someone about it. Well, if you're the trouble, you just found it. All right, that's enough. There'll There'll be have been no our travels on Home and Away, but what are they like away from home? We meet Aussie stars Tristan Banks and David Dixon. Still in Oz, we go for a wander in the Wandon Valley as a country practice is given a facelift. You've got 15 seconds, OK, and I'm going to ask you five questions, all right? And go. closer to home, Les Dennis tells how your family could win a fortune. Well, it was the Sokka Toomey generation in the 60s and the guiding hand of this particular sock was Shari Lewis, a Canadian entertainer who made Lamb Chop here, one of the greatest, and it has to be said, simplest puppet stars ever on television. Now, now in America, there's a move away from violent and street cred sort of uh, children's programs in favour of good, clean, old-fashioned fun. Now, 20 years on, Shari's made a comeback introducing Lamb Chop to a whole new generation of kids. Nick Peters met both of them at their home, yes, in Beverly Hills? That's right. Hi. 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 That's enough. Can't you do anything else? Hi. Yes, Shari Lewis, who must surely be one of the most enduring entertainers in television, is back and back in style. Hello, everyone. Now the show's begun, and I hope that I can count on you. In her time, she's been a song and dance performer, a magician, and conductor of symphony orchestras all across the world. She and the memorable Lamb Chop have been together for nearly 40 years. Yet, in their current series on PBS, they look as fresh as ever. Oh, my, this one was for Lamb Chop. I must have opened Shari and Lamb Chop got their break into television on NBC in 1960. Sure, who do you think it's from? Uh, uh, I think that it's from Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley? Uh-huh. Why should he write to you? Why shouldn't he? I like to him. Oh, that's logical. Three years right. later, NBC dropped Shari and Lamb Chop in favor of the Chipmunks. It wasn't until 1968 that Shari got a new series on the BBC, which was experimenting with using American performers in light entertainment. What about your friend Charlie Horn? Charlie Horn. Yes. He's always too busy playing crooked. You mean cricket? Not the way he plays. I have found that in America, kids know no cultural references. No, no, no cultural references. You bring up, you say something as sour grapes, they look at you as though you're a fruitcake. Um, you say, uh, don't cry wolf. They don't understand the boy who cried wolf. Her shows are designed to reverse that trend. She includes elements of Shakespeare, opera, literature, and art, all wrapped in whimsy, music, magic, and fun. Her return to American TV was due to a very deliberate move by PBS to lift children's television out of the cartoonish and vaguely corrupt swamp into which it had fallen and introduce a number of unashamedly wholesome shows. I think that violence and aggression and hostility are really terrible role models to set for kids. Awful. 
And all the studies, all the studies now show that kids who watch the violent, aggressive, hostile shows are violent, aggressive, and hostile. Boom! Currently in the works, a lamb chop Halloween special. Wonderful. Yeah? You like it? Did I scare you? You're a coward! I am not a coward! Stop that! Sally says it is not nice to call people names. Really? Yes, and I must say, I don't like your altitude. Lamb chop is a real part of my personality. And as such, the only thing that is inanimate is um, when she's not with me. But she exists all the time, and uh, she's very much a part of me. This is the song that doesn't end. Shari could have been back on American television many times in recent years, but she was always under pressure to make Lamb Chop more streetwise, more hip, more aggressive. She has obviously made Lamb Chop more modern, but refused to compromise on the act's essential decency. Her integrity may have cost her then, but with the show as popular as ever, and Lamb Chop toys and games a major money spinner, it has surely paid off now. I can't believe you guys! Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I've had it! That's it! That's it! What are you doing? story there of Shari Lewis and Lamb Chop, and we have to thank our own Barry Took for this little uh, Lamb Chop. This is Barry's very own, and he had him cleaned up, or her cleaned up, especially for the programme today. We will return her safe and sound, Barry. Thank you very much indeed for that. Of course, Lamb Chop, very big on television at the moment, on, on satellite TV here as well, and sheep are very big in Australia, so is Home and Away, the stormy saga of Australian teenage troubles. Now, over the years, numerous characters with unstable backgrounds have wandered in and out of Summer Bay. Not long gone is Nathan Roberts, probably the most unsavoury of them all, a compulsive liar. Nathan could turn on the charm to get whatever or whoever he wanted, and squeaky clean Sarah soon fell into his trap, despite interference from ex-boyfriend Tug. Hey, pal. What's up? You, that's what? Put your hands up. What are you trying to do to me and my girl? Nothing. What are you on about? So why'd you tell her I got back early? Listen, pretty boy, I don't know what your problem is, but if I were you, I'd go and see someone about it. Wait, if you're the trouble, you just found it. All right, that's enough. There'll be no fighting around here. If you want to do that, you go outside. Mind your own business. It is my business. This is between him and me. Oh, no, it's not. This diner is my business, and I'm protecting it from being smashed up by no good louts like you. Do I make myself quite clear? And hopefully there'll be no punching up in the studio today as we welcome Tristan Banks, who plays Tug, and David Dixon, who plays uh, Nathan in this series. Welcome to How you How are you, mate? Thank you. Yeah, that, that pushing around there in the diner, a bit realistic. Did you do much uh, practising for that? <laughs> it wasn't actually, that was actually the story behind it. There wasn't a lot of practice, and uh, no, Dave, no, Dave no, was no, a little no, surprised no, when I caught no. him in the diaphragm with that. <laughs> in rehearsals, it was a nice little, you know, push like this, and it was acted, you know, and then yeah. when it actually came to do the take, he fell, he punched me. So, as you saw on that, I go completely out yeah. of the screen, and, and the I started <laughs> laughing <laughs> out of the screen, and lucky yeah. they didn't see me, and then we came back in. The yeah. gloves yeah. were off. Well, well, David, from your point of view, now, Nathan, uh, as I described there, I mean, he's been... He's been termed the most unsavoury character ever in Summer Bay, which is some accolade. I mean, was he really as low as a snake's belly? Yeah, he was. I mean, he did some pretty, you know, unsavoury things to Sarah and to, to good old Tug. Tug stuff. But um, I, tried, I tried to bring a nice sort of quality to him. I tried to make him a likeable. When he was being a nice sort of guy, he was, I was the trying charmer. to make... The Yeah, mm. he, was, he was a total charmer. But when he was a devil, he was a devil. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that the, the, the devil uh, tag was your cross to bear. But um, I suppose, Tristan, from your point of view, being called Tug, um, <laughs> well, maybe it's, it's been, just yeah. me, but... You it's don't look a, like a yeah. tug. I'm not sure what a tug <laughs> should look you like. Thank you very I'm, I'm touched. No, it's, um, they've actually turned my character into a bit of a likeable rogue, you know. They've, um, which I guess they have to do, you know, if, if it's a... When I first came in, it was a, it was a character like, like um, Dave's, um, you know, only for a few weeks sort of thing. But I guess after a while it gets very, um, you know, p it gets a bit monotonous if people are constantly seeing you doing these wicked things to people. 
Um, yeah. So that yeah, what's they it short a for? I mean, what's, no, what gonna, is this? What is this real name in this series? Th there's a funny story behind that. It's something to do with a toilet cubicle at school or something, but we won't go into <laughs> it. Um, no, I'm I'm not too sure. Yeah. I'm not too sure. They, the the writers just thought it was a uh, a tough name for the character. So uh, and and it was for four weeks, but for two and a half years, it's a little. Uh, <laughs> it's very much. It's like Johnny Cash in a song, a boy named Sue. Yeah. I suppose you've got to learn to be tough with a name like that. Yeah. Let me say here at at the moment, people are watching uh, the character of Tug go through a depression, mm -hmm. um, maybe even an attempted suicide. I mean, he's, he's crashed the car and all that sort of thing. Uh, did that put you on a diner playing a role like that, having to be as depressive Re as Researching that? it did. Researching that storyline did. I, I watched some stuff on Four Corners. It's a, it's a documentary style sort of show um, in Australia and, and seeing some of, the, some of the depression and that sort of thing. It's a serious issue. Like, you think, you think it's, all, uh, it's all a joke, but it really did put me on a downer researching mm. this and I had to go out sure. and sort of find something to pet me up again because yeah. it, it really does sort of depress you. David, let me ask you this. I mean, there you are, you're big stars in Home and Away, you've got all this exposure and whatever. Um, how, is, how is Home and Away rated with other soaps out there in Australia? We're now going to talk about a country practice right. and show a film there. How, how, it's a young go-ahead programme full of young stars oh, there, Home and yeah. Away. How's, how's a country practice regarded? From an actor's point of view, a country practice is a better show to be on. Uh, from Why is point that? Of, well, it's, it's an hour show, so it's one hour a week instead of you know uh, five half hours a week. Uh, therefore, you get to research as Tristan did, and you, you get to you get to put something into your characters, and you get time to rehearse it. And, and, it, it, and the script writers get a chance to to write, you know, to, yeah. to write good stuff for the show. But whereas um, Home and Away, it's pretty much uh, churned out like a factory. It's, it's, it's get it out as quick as you possibly can. Well, and it's come on, quick, 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 let's go. Right, we'll, we'll be talking more about that later in the programme. But let me tell you about what is happening at a country practice. Now, this is like something out of a soap opera itself. In Australia, it's been axed by one channel, but picked up by another one. Now, they have uprooted the whole production from Sydney, where it was filmed, to a new home in Melbourne. And TV Weekly has had a lot and lot of letters uh, from viewers wanting to know more about this new revamp series. Thank you for those. So we're I'm going to tell you, our man in Australia, Matt Preston, visited the country practice in its new location, a little town called Emerald. Nestling in the green Dandenong Hills above Melbourne, Australia, lies the sleepy town of Emerald. It's a fairly ordinary place most of the time, but for two days every fortnight, Emerald becomes Wandon Valley, home to the new series of the country practice. And just to make sure visitors know they're in the right place, the locals have given them a few clues. There's the Wandon Valley General Store, the Wandon Valley Fish and Chip Shop, authentic Aussie Wandon Valley Pizza, and they've even renamed the fire station. That could be a bit confusing in emergencies. But although a country practice appears to have well and truly made its mark here, the little town of Emerald is fairly new to this game. The old series was filmed near Sydney, but when it moved to a different channel, the cast and crew moved too. Stand right back, people, off the road. Right. Off the road. Right. Yeah, Right and the new location has meant a few changes. The plot now revolves around a community health centre instead of a country hospital. Filming begins early. By 7 o'clock, the cast have already spent a chilly two hours rehearsing. The new production has lost a few familiar faces, but Joan Sidney, who plays Matron Sloan, has survived the changes. <laughs> Some kind of a time lag is there between the previous scene and this one? Two scenes, oh, well, I'm not by now, then. She's not silly, is she? Stand around the freezing cold, I'll do okay. <laughs> I'd have gone home, actually. <laughs> and a country practice just wouldn't be the same without Esme Watson. But Esme's not quite the same as she used to be. Um, she used to be very neurotic in the olden days. She was always taking her nerve pills and fainting away at the slightest sign of, you know, her problem. But she's uh, certainly softened, I think, through the years. Um, originally, she was more comic relief to balance the medical drama. Uh, that still happens, but also, much to my delight, I, I'm in mo involved more in the storylines and can show the dramatic side or the, or the lonely side of Esme, the fact that she never had children. So um, I think she's more likeable now than she used to be. The new show is not that different from the old one, but the stunning Melbourne landscape will give it a different feel. The countryside around Sydney was uh, a lot flatter, a lot drier. Um, I think that they were always trying to find the sort of look that we have here naturally all around us. So I think that it looks better in Victoria, but I'm biased. You'll be seeing a lot of this old farm. Several main characters now live here. Off camera, the crew have made it their home too. 
They work a 12-hour day until evening falls, but knowing you're working on a hit series keeps you going. I don't know what it is about the show, but it just seems to have that really close feel about it, where everyone enjoys working on it. Everyone gets on together. I think it's got a lot to do with the cast, too. The cast is just a nice, friendly, open bunch of people without too many airs and graces, and they're always prepared to get in there and have a good time. And cut. Thank you. Good. And it's a good time, second time around, for actor Paul Gleeson. I play the ranger. Um, however, I have played other roles on this show in the past as, as a guest. Um, so the people over where you are are probably just getting those now. Uh, so if you see an escaped convict who uh, runs around the bush wielding a knife, that'll be me. It's the new location and the new country practice. More Australian soap talk with uh, Nathan and Tug from Home and Away after the break. And as well as that, we'll be looking at an invention which could revolutionise your favourite game shows. And on the subject of game shows, we meet Les Dennis. <laughs> If things aren't taking off as planned. Milky Milky Way. A magically whipped, light and fluffy mousse centre, surrounded in delicious milk chocolate. Milky Way. So light it's magic anytime. <laughs> Magic's in the Milky Way. What can you get out of life in 10 seconds? Plenty here. I want him to have something to remind him of home. Who cares about your photos as much as you do? Who cares that you might want advice? And who cares enough to check every print by hand? Who cares that you might want them within the hour? Boots. We care because you do. Good afternoon, Zirab. It's time to get up. It's morning, and the name's Tim. <laughs> Flipping wardrobe mass. <laughs> ah. Thank goodness for McLean's. At least there's one thing I can rely on. McLean's helps fight plaque, the main cause of tooth decay and gum disease. Even back in the 90s, its new formulation was incredibly advanced. My old granny wouldn't use any of the toothpaste. Well, old gran, her teeth are the only original parts left. Breakfast here! <laughs> Cornflakes. I know, sweetheart, but it's only a small site shop. A cornflakes? I know, I know. Kellogg's cornflakes, delicious flakes of corn drenched in ice cold milk. Mmm. You think it's going to last all week? Should do. It's a big enough box. Kellogg's cornflakes. Have you forgotten how good they taste? Only foxes would bake rolled oats, golden syrup, and dairy butter into a biscuit you could crunch any time. Oh, well, too much crinkle crunch in the morning. I like the old crinkle crunch with my tea. And at half past eleven, my idea of heaven is a crinkle crunch or free. Oh, I like a scoff crinkle crunch after me dinner. One likes a nice crinkle crunch after lunch. And when it's time for bed, there's a lot to be said for cocoa and a crinkle crunch. Fox's crinkle crunch. Have you crunched one today? If you wear dentures, your choice of food may be rather limited. Painful bits of food under your dentures could leave you only the soft option. A little super polygrip will hold your dentures firmly, so no irritating bits, just more of your favourite foods. Super polygrip and new longer-lasting polygrip ultra. Welcome back. Now, if you watch Family Fortunes, you will know that it asks a hundred people a set of questions, and that forms the whole basis of the actual game. And I'm sure if you asked a hundred Family Fortune viewers their favourite game show host, top of the list undoubtedly would be Les Dennis. Uh -uh. Well, Les, you'd be you'd be top of my list anyway. Anyway, Family Fortunes is back this autumn. It's back for its uh, 14th series, and uh, up at Central TV in Nottingham, there's the man himself, busy rehearsing for the new series. Les, how are you? 
I'm very well, thanks, Eamon. And you? Well, I'm very well too, Les. Now, you're something of an expert on all these, uh, these game shows. What advice would you give to someone who wants to be a contestant on Family Fortunes? Um, well, a contestant that wants to play Family Fortunes has to not just play on his own, he has to come along with, or he or she has to come along with four family members. Um, and basically, they have to be a family that get on <laughs> and don't argue, um, and hopefully uh, come out and be as bright as possible and uh, come up with silly answers. That's what we like best of all, actually, Eamon. We like them to come out with the, with the deft ones as well. Well, that's good. And when they get to the studio, Les, how, how do you make them relax? I do all the rehearsals with them. I actually come, this is, you're seeing us now, um, we've just finished rehearsals with the two families on our final show. Um, I think that's important for me to do um, because there are other game show hosts that maybe go out and work on the edge um, and kind of work on playing off them. I think my job really is to put them at their ease. So I come out and, and rehearse with them in the afternoon and I tell them, they never believe me, but I always tell them that it's, it's more nerve wracking in the afternoon because you know what it's like in an empty studio and you're trying to answer and you're trying to get some atmosphere yeah, going yeah. and that in the evening it'll be better. Uh, and they never believe me until, it, until it's all over and they say, you were right, Les. And, and, and it's great, you know, they, they come out here in, in front of the audience and relax and I just hold their hand if they're a bit nervous. How do I put this, Les? Do any of them ever feel, for instance, that you would be, well, open to bribery? Well, actually, we had a family from Dublin recently and they were really generous. They don't have to sweeten me at all because, <laughs> I mean, they've got here and uh, there's no way that I yeah. can sway the game. Um, this game, uh, there's, there's no way that, that it, you can tell who's going to win or whether a family is going to win. Um, and uh, this family from Dublin came and they were the first um, we'd had from uh, the south of Ireland and they brought me beautiful Waterford Crystal and, uh, and, and a, a bottle of, of lovely whiskey which I'm going to keep. Um, but, you know, anybody that's um, sitting at home, you don't have to do that. Just, uh, just turn up at the auditions or write to us and uh, we'd, we'd love to see you. Especially if you have a bottle of whiskey. And what about these surveys? Do these really exist? Do you do these? Yes, uh, the surveys do. People ask me that. They say, surely you didn't survey 100 people. But we do. We actually survey all over the country as well. Because if we were to survey in one area, say we surveyed in London and yeah. we asked um, yeah. people to name a river, they would automatically say the Thames. So we have to take um, a, a general survey all over the country so that we get different, uh, different mm -hmm. answers. Now, as far as the programme goes, this is your it series, Les? This is my eighth series. The series has been running for 14 years. Um, Bob Monkhouse did it for three years, then Max did it for two. Uh, then there was a break, uh, and then I've done it now for the last eight years. I can't believe it. It just seems to have flown by. So yeah. I've done it longer than, than both guys together. Amazing. So I think, it, you know, I think now people... I mean, when I first started, I was so worried about following Bob and Max. I mean, two giants of show business yeah. um, into a game show, something I'd never done before. But um, I think eight years proves, and it gets more and more popular every year. We were up to 15 million viewers last year, and we're hoping um, when we go out from the autumn right through this year that we'll get more than that, even. Well, you're doing a great job, and long may continue, as long as you stay off the whiskey, I suppose, there. But good luck. All right, Eamon, see you next time, probably singing in the rain again, maybe oh. with, uh, with Scylla. <laughs> like we were, do you remember that? That was a great time, wasn't it? <laughs> I could have forget. He's only bringing that up because he could actually do it for uh, surprise, surprise. Les and I had to sing in the rain, do a Gene Kelly number. But uh, that's Les Dennis there from uh, the set of Family Fortunes in Nottingham for Central Television, so thanks to Les. Now, before we leave the, the subject of game shows, actually, there's an interesting new invention we want to tell you about. Um, most of us like to, to take a, an active part in TV quiz shows like Family Fortunes or Bullseye or Blockbusters or something like that. Most of us like to it's shout out the answers at home, of course, and try and beat the studio contestants. E. Perform a piece of music having only heard it. Played by ear. That's it. F-A-A. -A. Aviation branch of the Royal Navy. Um, flying. Not flying. Royal Navy. Oh, uh, fleet air arm. That's it. H-N. But now there's a new interactive device that claims it will revolutionise the way we watch TV quizzes. He was number one in the charts at Christmas 1980. That's right. <laughs> Now, this uh, box of tricks, it seems, will uh, mean that we can uh, compete from our armchairs with uh, thousands of other families who are watching the same programme in their own homes. Well, hi, everyone in the room has a remote control linked to a little computer and via their home telephone line to the outside world. Now, taking Blockbusters, for example, the computer would flash multiple choices on the screen so people can answer via the remote controls. What S is a drink? 
made with beer and lemonade. Yes. Yes. So Daniel. Shandy. You knows that all right, don't you? Shandy it is. You have the same time to answer as the studio contestants. And at the end of the show, the computer counts your scores, showing you who's won in your house. But more than that, you'll be linked to a national computer. And by pressing a button, your score goes down the phone line instantly. And the makers say within seconds, a winner's name will be flashed up on everyone's screens who have taken part. And there it is. And the device isn't just good for game shows. You can call up information while you're watching shows about sports and uh, TV personalities. You can join in judging sports, such as boxing, at the touch of a button. In soaps and dramas, you'll be able to find all the latest news and gossip about the plots and the characters. And the system's about to go on trial. If all goes well, uh, the makers say we'll be able to rent it in the future for about six pounds a month. You can have that at home and play to your heart's content. Competition this week concerns uh, Home and Away, so what I'll do is actually get David and Tristan to uh, ask it for us. Right, lads. Right. Well, you see the saga of uh, uh, Summer Bay Daily yeah. on TV, but do you know when it was first shown on British TV? So the question we're asking you is, when did Home and Away come to Britain? Was it 1986? Or 1989? Or was it in 1992? Ah, those are your options. Slightly tricky, that one. What we'll do is give you an extra clue. That was the same year Sky Television was launched and TV Weekly, then presented by Anne Diamond, first started. What was the year? Answers, please, on a postcard to Competition TV Weekly, PO Box 184, Southampton, or call the prize line there. There's the number, 0891 treble 3040, with the address again at the end of the programme. Now, last week, we asked you for the name of Joe Sugden's first wife in Emmerdale Farm. The correct answer was Christine Sharp, correctly guessed by Edward Littlejohn. Edward's from Bracknell in Berkshire, and he wins this week's Pocket TV. So well done to you, Edward. Right, OK, Tristan and David, there you are. Your pin-ups and heroes to so many people watching <laughs> Home and Away. And you're in the front cover of all these magazines, all these TV listings and teen magazines. Is there a price to pay for, for that fame so young? Because, you know, you're, you're 19, you're 23. Do you feel you've lost much of those teenage years yourself? Yeah, oh, definitely. I had to grow up quite quickly. Like, when I was 16, I, I started my band in Decent Obsession. And, we, you know, I was hiring and firing people and taking the money from venues and organising tour budgets and all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, I had to grow up really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of it. Um, it's not such a bad thing. I don't know whether it's such a bad thing. Maybe you, you uh, get a bit of a business head um, earlier, which is which is a good thing, I suppose. Maybe you get a uh, maybe you get a head start on everyone else. Um, but I mean, there's plenty of time to to play. And Dave likes his exactly. Toys I love, we love our toys. To <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, well, good luck to you. I tell you what, whenever you plan ahead, because I know, I mean, you've left the show, yep. um, David and uh, Tristan. You intend to leave. Yeah. Um, so good luck and all that lies ahead with you and indeed with, with your music career which is planned and you're the only Australian soup star I've ever met that's not going to record a record so uh, <laughs> maybe we should be thankful, be thankful for that Tristan yeah. so lads thanks very much indeed nice talking to you today thank you we're now you going much. home to uh, watch today's episode of Home and Away wouldn't miss it no really no, wouldn't not on your really <laughs> wouldn't back again next week for more TV gossip on TV Weekly have a good day bye bye is that she grows to be strong and healthy. For Emma's sake, pure and wholesome ingredients go into Boots First Harvest baby food. Who cares that your baby gets the right start? Boots, we care because you do. Hmm, touching. Now, here's an ordeal for those of you with sensitive teeth.